Big Board Sports with Roger Wyland. Next on Big Board Sports, Tiger was making a charge at the British Open. The future stars of the LPGA Tour hit the town of Colony Golf Course. In baseball, bombs away at Sky Dome in Toronto. Meanwhile, the Giants are coming to town. Tommy Johnson of the Firebirds says he's ready for Big Board Sports. Tommy's ready, and uh, so am I. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger Wyland, and welcome to our 30-minute edition of Big Board Sports. We'll talk Firebirds football later on in our show. But let's get right to golf and the final round of the British Open. It was a day when Tiger Woods made quite a charge. The unexpected Brian Watts continued to hang in there, but in the end, Masters champion Mark O'Meara added yet another major. Of course, he'd been shut out until he won that Masters, and now he's on a roll. And the very tough Birkdale course, and Tiger Woods closed with a 66. Boy, birdie three out of the last four, including a chip in for the bird at 17. He was roaring, and then he rolled in another birdie at 18. Final round, four under 66, one over for the tournament, and he had to wait. Fortunately, he was not involved in the playoff. Masters champion Mark O'Meara for birdie at 17 and the lead at the British Open. He shot a final round of 68. Brian Watts, tremendous all weekend at 18, needed to get up and down out of the bunker. A tough lie here to force a playoff. And the great bunker shot by Brian, and that would set him up for the par and the four-hole playoff with Mark O'Meara. The difference right on the first playoff hole, a par five. O'Meara makes birdie, and then he would close things out on 18, win his second major of the year, won the Masters, and now he can add the British you know, Open. This year when I finally broke through at Augusta, I mean, that was a dream come true. But now to have come here and, and played the way I did, coming down the stretch, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Shoot a final round 70. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't win because I had the chance to do it. But uh, overall, I'm very proud of myself. Hi, here's a final look at the leaderboard. O'Mara, then Watts, Woods, Parnovic played well today. Furyk made a nice run. Others, David Duval still with no major, plus seven. Jansen Ells, Price. And what happened to my man Freddie Couples with an 81 and plus 19? All right, staying on golf and staying at the British Open. Shot of the day. England amateur. Justin Rose, and what a shot it was. 69 for the 17-year-old today. Two over for the golf tournament. He's going to turn pro, I understand. Imagine what a thrill it must have been for him this weekend to play so well. All right, baseball and the Yankees had only lost two series all season long until they lost today in Toronto and lost the series with the Blue Jays. And a little bit of a home run derby feel in this one. Jose Canseco off Andy Pettit in the third. That's a shot. They haven't seen anything yet, though. That made it 4-1 in the fifth. Here's what I'm talking about. Watch this from Carlos Delgado. That's into the fifth deck at Sky Dome at no man's land. Nobody's ever done that before. 6-2 Blue Jays. And then Canseco again. Home run, solo shot, number 26. Pettit went six and two-thirds, giving up seven earned runs. His first loss since May 31st. The Yankees lose a series for only the third time this season. 9-3 Toronto, doubleheader tomorrow against the Tigers. We were playing the Boston Red Sox, and say what you want about Detroit, but I tell you, they are playing very well right now. Top of the third, Boston gets on the board first. Billy Ashley connects for a solo shot. It's one nothing, Boston. The Tigers tie it in the fourth. Luis Gonzalez hits his 13th dinger of the year to right. And this game was 1-1 going to the eighth inning, and the Tigers get a couple of runs on RBI singles by Damon Easley and Bobby Higginson, both coming off Tom Gordon. And then the Detroit ace, Justin Thompson, pitched a complete game seven hitter, 10 strikeouts, including two Ks in the ninth against Garcia Parra. Move on. He's now 9-8 and eight on the season. The Tigers take two out of three. They've won 11-12, 3-1 Detroit with the win. Here's some more scores. American League for you. Baltimore leads uh, now a final over Anaheim, 7-4. Juan Gonzalez at two RBIs, or two uh, home run at two RBIs in the day. That's 105 for Big Juan on the season. Cleveland beat Chicago. Frank Thomas, a three-run homer, his 16th. Uh, Matt Stairs with two home runs. Oakland, a winner over Minnesota, 5-2. to two. Kansas City over Seattle, 4-1. to one. National League, oh, those Mets, they can do it to you. After two straight shutout wins, they were hoping to take three out of four from the Phillies, but as I said, these are the Mets, and they can be a disappointment, and they were today. They get out to the good lead early, and in the third inning, Bernard Gilkey 
uncranking one, a two-run shot, and the Mets took the 4-1 lead. Fifth inning, Mike Welch pitching, and John Olaru, the lefty, going down the right field line, solo shot, 5-2 Mets, but lead wouldn't hold up. Tenth inning, tie game, Ruben Amaro batting 176, doubles off Dennis Cook, Mike Lieberthal scored the go-ahead run, Philadelphia out in front, 7-6. Mark Leiter, brother Al, I'm sure watching, struck out Mike Piazza, runners at first and third to end the game. That is six straight extra inning losses for the Mets. And for you Met fans out there, the Mets are a game below 500 since they've acquired Piazza. Some more scores. Smoltz got his uh, eighth uh, win of the year, 11-6 over uh, Milwaukee. Pittsburgh a winner. They've now won three in a row. The Cubs have moved ahead of the Giants for the NL wild card spot. They beat Florida in 12. St. Louis uh, McGuire uh, scoring a run in the last of the night. Did not hit a home run tonight. They beat L.A. 5-4. to four. San Diego over Cincinnati. Hey, count Greg Vaughn in that home run chase, number 34 tonight. And Houston over San Francisco in 12. Locally, Allentown over the Diamond Dogs, 6-2. to two. New Jersey scores 17 runs on Adirondack. And Pittsfield beat New Jersey in the New York pen. Here at home, the up-and-coming stars of the LPGA Tour wrapped up their we call it the Futures Tour and the Futures Tournament Weekend at the Town of Colony Courts. And uh, I tell you what, Michelle Venerados from Largo, Florida, came in today with a comfortable six-stroke lead, and she shot a final round three under 69, and in the process set a tournament record with a 203 total, six strokes ahead of Jan Kleiman. Here's the way the final leaderboard shaped out Venerados with a great weekend over the Town of Colony. A couple there at minus seven. Uh, Childs at minus six. Betsy Drambor, congratulations to her, the only local to make the cut. She finished the tournament eight over. She finished with a final round today of 76. Anna, Annika Sorenstam, you talk about Breezen, a six-stroke lead going into the final round of the Big Apple Classic in New Rochelle, and she coasted. Sorenstam birdied at seven, and then this is the long birdie at 12, and this put her at 17 under. She set marks by finishing 19 under par for a four-round record total of 265. The eight-shot win also is the largest margin of victory at the Big Apple Classic. Joan Pitcock was second. All right, let's continue to move on. And when we come back, the day in auto racing, including all the uh, local results. Also coming up, Firebirds football. We'll talk to, with uh, defensive specialist Tommy Johnson as the Firebirds clinched uh, their division on Friday night and now get set for Orlando. All coming up on Big Board Sports including a story on the Giants. They're coming to town. Big Board Sports is brought to you in part by Klein's All Sports, featuring Nike. Welcome back. I'm Roger Wyland. The OTBs had the uh, day off. Well, not, not really. They actually were uh, very busy because they put on a clinic this morning at the Great Dane Tennis Camp on the campus of the University at Albany. Members of the 15 Love program were part of the uh, activity and obviously a nice touch by Albany head coach Darcy Trapazzo, whose teams have been second to none the past several years. Nice, uh, nice gesture on the part of the OTPs and it worked out well. Back on golf in the final round of this weekend's uh, seniors event from Long Grove, Illinois. The no one surprise, Hell Irwin won again. Uh, not the best final round he's ever had. He actually hit a couple in the water, but once he got to 18, he avoided the water. That's within 10 feet of the hole. He birdied 18 and held off Larry Nelson by three strokes. It was Irwin's fourth seniors PGA Tour victory of the season, 17th overall on the senior tour. All right, in tonight's, uh, let's do a tip first. How about that? Uh, time for another golf tip. We always have Tom Smack on the air. He's the director of golf from the Sagamore Resort in Bolton Landing. Tom. Today we're going to be working on the short wedge shot. We're about 40 or 50 yards in front of the green. We're looking at a shot that we need to make sure that we carry the ball all the way to the putting surface in order to get the best roll out of the shot as it hits the green. What we're going to do is take the club in a nice straight back, low to the ground, inside move, contact with the left arm very straight, come down with a good descending blow to hit the shot with a short follow through to get good spin on the shot. Next, we're going to work on the, the shots out of the trouble situations that we get ourselves into when we play this great game. We're going to be hitting out of the deep rough with a shot trying to get the ball back in play and not hit that shot that we, we may not be able to pull off. 
All right, thank you, Tom. We'll get you back to baseball. Albany Colony Diamond Dogs. Our segment this week is on third baseman Gary Phillips. He's uh, doing a pretty good job in the field. He's also batting 319. He's tied for the league lead in doubles with Phillip, uh, with 14. Phillips spent some time in the San Francisco Giants minor league organization, and later in our show, he will talk about how he would someday like to make it back. And by the way, the dogs are home uh, Friday to take on the Adirondack Lumberjacks at 7 p.m. over at Heritage Park. Good news for the Adirondack Red Wing fans this week. A, the team isn't leaving town, which is always the hot rumor. B, they're back to a full-time affiliation with Detroit. And C, Jim Neal was named their new general manager. Neal was recently introduced, uh, as a matter of fact, Friday at the Glens Falls Civic Center, where head coach Glenn Murkowski also named former Adirondack Mark Potvin as their new assistant. But getting a quality team on the ice is a priority. We, we want to get back to what the... Uh what's helped us become that and so we're, we're stocking we want to put a strong team in here add some more depth to organization up top and help develop our young players i'm excited about some of the names that are coming up and the type of players that they're committed to bring in here i think it's going to it's going to be something that uh, as far as i'm concerned i want a team that uh, after every game you can walk in the dressing room and look everybody in the eyes and feel comfortable win or lose uh, that, that there's been a total commitment by your hockey club and all right, good signs all the way around there. Nil was also named assistant general manager on Friday of the Detroit Red Wings. The Giants are coming to town, and I think we can all expect bigger crowds than uh, a year ago, especially after that marvelous 10-5-1 season. This is the start of a new three-year deal, but as Karen Hitchcock pointed out this week, the university hopes it's the start of a never-ending relationship. Uh, the Giants have seemed very comfortable in the setting here, uh, in all of the support facilities, uh, in the fields, the condition of the fields, which is paramount, the living arrangements, the food arrangements. So we have to be sure we keep that to the standards that they've been. Uh, once the University of Albany and the Giants uh, continue to be comfortable with the arrangement, and we are now very, uh, we have to be sure the community stays interested because without the support of the corporations, of the fans, with regard to helping to cover the costs of the camp, that's a key element. Well, no question about that. Giants will open camp on Saturday with a double session, one from 9 to 11 in the morning and then back from 3 to 5 in the afternoon. The Patriots open camp today in Smithfield, Rhode Island. The honeymoon season is over for Pete Carroll, and uh, of course he lost Curtis Martin to the Jets, but all in all, Pete in a pretty good mood reading the media today. It, it feels different. There's, uh, there's different concerns right now. The concerns last year were, you know, the, uh, are we going to get the gym opened on time? Is we, you know, we get into the practice field, or the camera's going to be set up, or the bus is going to show up, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now it, we are, uh, we're in full flight now, man, so we're uh, able to get even more focused to the football and the things that are, are critical to us, uh, much more comfortable with that, that aspect of it. I feel much more into the football side of things than I did a year ago this time. I hate training camp. <laughs> I mean, we, we get our best whip for a month. It, it, it's, it's monotonous. You know, everything get, gets real repetitive. The food, uh, the, 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 the teammates, the boys, all, all there is, there's a bunch of boys around here, you know. It, it's, it's nasty, it's smelly, <laughs> it's hot, you know, um, but it's fun. All right, lawyer, we get the uh, we get the point. Now the Dallas Cowboys were actually the first to uh, open camp this week. It happened on Thursday. Cowboys training in Wichita Falls, Texas, under new head coach Chan Gailey. Gailey replaced Barry Switzer, and hey, everybody's going to try to get things turned around in Big D. I mean, that's part of the whole you know attitude we're trying to project as a team is that there's unity and consistency, you know, in the relationships on the team as well as you know hopefully when we get practice in our playing time too. No, I don't have anything to compare it to. You know, it was. Uh, it was great out there today, so I don't know what's happened in the past. It was never anything like that, especially not just running sprint. Well, that was that was a lot of enthusiasm. Well, I was excited. All right, as promised, we'll get you back to uh, more Diamond Dogs. We'll talk about auto racing. We've got all the local results coming up. And also, as promised, we will talk with defensive specialist Tommy Johnson. The Birds getting ready for a matchup with Orlando on Saturday at the Pepsi Arena. It's all coming up next on Big Board Sports. Go 
Well, birds are eight and four. Tommy Johnson joins us, getting ready for Orlando coming up on Saturday, the regular season finale, or at home anyway, then on the road to take on New York the following week. Tommy, good to see you. Good to be here. And uh, first year in arena ball, I have to ask you, what do you, do you like this crazy game? Yes, sir, I like it a lot. It's uh, it's a little different than the outdoor game. A lot more fun, yeah. I think, than the outdoor game. It's, it's, it's tougher than people think. Tommy and I, Tommy and I, have hit it off right away because we both we both like college football. Oh yeah, I love it. <laughs> you remember those days? national championship at Alabama? Yes, sir. That was an exciting year for me. It was my sophomore year in college, and uh, uh, they told me when they recruited me that they, that if I gave them two years, we'd win a national championship, and we did it. And, did it. <laughs> and then you went right into the NFL. Yes, sir. Jacksonville. Went to Jacksonville. Played with Jacksonville for a year and a half. Well, actually a year, and went back for their training camp, and didn't quite work out. And I uh, came back after that and did the World League. Did the World League thing. And, and, and here you are in year one. Is is the ambition and the goal, Tommy, for you still to someday get back to the NFL? How much does that uh, play a part of your mind and your mindset these days? Well, I think for any football player, the NFL is the ultimate goal since seeing that it is the, you know, football league to be in. Uh, I, uh, I'm content with what I'm doing now. I'm happy. And I'm having fun. I, I love arena football. I think it's a great sport. But uh, if, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, so be it. You guys pulled one out at San Jose on Friday night, uh, and we were unable to connect on the highlights. Give us an idea of what that thing was like. You score in the final couple of minutes, and Pulaski throws eight touchdown passes in that game, 56-53. Uh, what was the atmosphere like Friday night at San Jose? Well, San Jose, has, they, they have a good team. They have a real good team. They have uh, good fans. Uh, good coaching staff. Uh, we went down there with the intentions of, of just trying to get on top of them early and, 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 and put the game away early, but uh, they stuck around. Yeah, they, they stuck did. around, and, and, and Coach Daly told us at the halftime that we had to go back out the second half and, 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 play, and put together a full half of football, and we did that, and we you, came out with a victory. You clinch your division. Um, you're in the, in the playoffs now. The question is, are you going to be home for the playoffs? And if you can beat Orlando, that'll put you in, in a great spot. You're going to have to do something with Barry Wagner, though, on Saturday. <laughs> yes, I've heard a lot about Wagner. Uh, uh, that's all you talk about is Wagner. Yeah, actually. I'll bet you do. <laughs> yeah, you, you've seen the tape, <laughs> yeah, haven't you? Huh? I've seen the tapes. But uh, I, think we can, I think we have a good defense, and I think we'll do a good job of, of containing Wagner. You can't shut him down. No. A player like that, you can't shut him down. You just have to contain him, you know. And I've always said in the, in the arena league, it's the defenses down the stretch in these big games. You guys need to create turnovers. Right. Correct. The offense is going to score points. You figured right. that out yes, by now. The defense has got to stop you. Yes, sir. I think defense has to step up uh, uh, definitely uh, in the secondary, in the in the line play, and 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 just mentally, we have mm -hmm. to step up and play ball. Tommy, you're off to a good start. Uh, good luck in the finish, and hope to see you at a home playoff game real soon. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right, Tommy Johnson joining us, and let's tell you about the game and get to it. It's going to be Saturday. It's at the uh, Pepsi Arena, Orlando, and Albany. Time Warner uh, Cable ESPN Family Pack. Two adult tickets, two youth tickets, four hot dogs, four small sodas, and two ESPN T-shirts <laughs> for fifty dollars. All right, folks. Having some fun with the birds on Saturday night and Big Board Radio Sports coming your way tomorrow between 6.30 and 9. When we come, we will have highlights of uh, today's NASCAR Bush Series from uh, Fontana, California. And then later in the show, oh yes, we haven't forgot about our wild and wacky segment. You can tell it's going to be wacky tonight. It's all coming up on Big Board Sports. All right, folks, one of the players having a solid season for the Diamond Dogs right now is the third baseman, Gary Phillips. And as we told you earlier in the show, hitting about 319, he was tied for the uh, league lead in doubles with 14. But, hey, like everybody else, uh, aspirations have made me move it on, getting back into the big someday. I spent uh, five years with the Giants. I made it, played a year in double A, and it was exciting, fun, and, you know, a lot of competition. But I guess, you know, my time ran out a little bit. Is your time run out? I'm making it back to a team, and you're just kind of here to finish out your career and uh, play in Northeast League? I, I don't know if my time's run out. It might have. I, I'll, I'll decide that, I guess, at the end of the season. If I don't get talked to by an organization, then I might end up settling down. I'm, I just got married recently, so uh, finish up school if nobody talks to me this year and hang them up. Probably. All right, see what happens, right? Dogs back home, as I said, this Friday to take on the Adirondack Lumberjacks. 
7 p.m. at Heritage Park. Now to the NASCAR. There's actually no NASCAR this week, but the Bush Series was in full throttle out in uh, Fontana, California. The Audio 300 and problems for Todd Bodine. The lug nuts weren't fastened, and he lost his tire. And then David Green ran out of gas. We had all kinds of problems in this race. Bodine had to push him. Uh, it was good news, though, for Dale Earnhardt. Not senior, but junior. A chip off the old block. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins today's Bush race. Also in auto racing, Alex Zanardi tied a cart record by winning his fourth straight race. The streak matches the mark set by Al Unser Jr. in 1990. Michael Andretti was second. Jimmy Vassar was third. At the Valley uh, on Saturday night, Brett Hearn involved in a crash. Not just him, about every car in the darn field was wrapped up in that one. It's been a tough couple of weeks for Hearn. Just the opposite, though, for Kenny Tremont here. He's hot. Tremont won his fourth in a row in the 30-lap feature. Tremont has seven victories at the Valley. Uh, Dave Camara, the modified winner at Fonda, and uh, Lee Nutting was the modified winner on Friday night at Albany, Saratoga. All right, finally, we look back on this week's Wild and Wacky. <laughs> And they found a bat in left field. Troy O'Leary found a little bat that's been out there for the last few innings and notified the Florida law he will get the homestead exemption. Ah, yes, after a two hour and 20 minute. Again, the one two. Well hit, but Joe Deck down the right field side, way back there. Talking to mom, I'll bet you. Yeah, I'm talking about Junior's home run. And Jay will be the second man up here. 100 have been women, believe it or not. And so far this evening, as of 6 o'clock tonight, over 3,200 heads. Junior last night. Here's Red. All right, would you do that? Recapping our top stories on this Sunday, Masters champion Mark O'Meara wins the British Open, beating Brian Watts in a four-hole playoff. And Jose Canseco with two home runs, and the Blue Jays beat the Yankees 9-3-0 in the third time this season the Yankees have lost. A series doubleheader for the Yanks tomorrow against the Detroit Tigers. Coming up next week, a lot on the New York Giants as camp will open here in Albany. The U.S. Seniors open, and will also be uh, Bill Lambden will report from the Baseball Hall of Fame. That's it for this week's show. I'm Roger Wyland for our entire staff. We'll see you next week for yet another edition of Big Board Sports. Good night, everybody. For Mark O'Mara, he's won the British Open. His second major in a hundred days. Big Board Sports is brought to you in part by Klein's All Sports, featuring Nike.